Hi, and welcome into the Songwriter Sessions. I'm your host, Ryan Panette. Today's program is a little bit different than usual. Usually on the program, we bring in uh, musicians to talk about their music and play some music too. But tonight's Songwriter Sessions is a poetry edition. We have three guests on the program to talk about their poetry, the spoken word, their performances about it, uh, and I'm psyched to have these individuals on the program uh, and to hear from them. So uh, just a, a quick overview of who we have on the show. Uh, tonight we're going to have Tim Hall, who's a Detroit native uh, and a lower, uh, lover of the Deaf Poetry Jam uh, and making a name for himself in the Boston poetry scene. Uh, we also have Lucci. Lucci is a poet, actor, comedian uh, who's social, social justice minded uh, and also centered on peace and love. Uh, so we have Lucci on the program tonight. And also we are, are graced with the presence uh, of Miss Niael Israel. Um, she's an internationally acclaimed poet, vocalist, performer, uh, and arts educator uh, from Boston who's performed all across the United States. So uh, I'm psyched for this program, the, the Poets edition of the Songwriter Session. So welcome on to all of you. I'm psyched to have you here. Thank you very much. You got it. Um, so so uh, I'll start here with Tim. Um, Tim and I go a, a little ways back, <laughs> yeah. and, and we've been talking about this program for a while to kind of give the platform um, for poets in the Boston area to have uh, their opportunity to, to, sh to share their craft. So if you want to talk a little bit about how this came to be. Absolutely. I've been someone who just likes to capitalize on opportunities and having talking with you and knowing that you're an artist yourself and we've chatted about doing some writing together and working on some music and you randomly mentioned <laughs> that you had this show. So I figured why not see if you were interested in doing something um, with poetry and, and putting together uh, an opportunity to showcase poetry as an art. And as I was thinking about it more and more, originally it was um, me thinking about, oh, how do I showcase some of the things that I've been working on and, and really introduce myself as a, as a poet. I've, I've never really considered myself a poet until recently, so it feels really good to have been working on my craft and to have something to, to share with others. Um, but then I was thinking about the, the community here at Boston, in Boston, and, and how much it's really crafted my own work, how much it, it's really supported me in, in my transition from moving to Boston a couple of years ago. And I really thought it would be a perfect opportunity to showcase um, individuals that I look up to actually in the city uh, right. who are poets. And um, yeah, so it was just a really cool opportunity to take advantage of. And now we're here, and, and you know, one of my favorite parts of running this program is to give, you know, give the audience and, and give the opportunity to be able to, to share your craft with people. Um, so you know, I kind of want to jump into, and we heard a little bit from Tim, but uh, for the two of you, just a little bit background about yourself and, uh, and your, your poetry, uh, you know, the, the short history of, of your, uh, your poetry. <laughs> well, um, I was born a poet, and um, I just, Recently, I want to say the past five years, there, there was a spell where I would go out occasionally and read a poem, and then time would pass, I don't know, months, years, and people would say, hey, why don't you come and do a poem? And I think to myself, you know, it was strange because I was not necessarily interested in being out in front of people doing my poetry, and it was, you know, that was kind of sort of, um, you feel kind of, you know, in front of people, it's, you know, <laughs> it's, it's a weird feeling, but um, anyway, so I just started doing it kind of regularly like the past five years like sort of just kind of committing to it um, and it was easier too when I finally finished school and got a lot of things out of the way then I could just do poetry and then I just started slamming and reading on the mic and things just started happening I just started winning so awesome. <laughs> um, I, it was actually by accident with me um, <laughs> I was 12 years old it was Mother's Day I didn't know what to use my dad's money to get my mom a gift for. And I was like, hmm, I'll write a poem. Like, I can be like Hallmark, no problem, you know. <laughs> and, you know, she liked it so much she cried, you know. But of course, I'm her son, so even if I just said, I love you, she would have cried. But it doesn't matter because that started a tradition. Because ever since I was 12, I'm now 30, every single year for Mother's Day, I write a different Mother's Day poem. Mm. That evolved into, oh, this person was just born. Can you write a poem for them? I became the poet of the family. You know, every occasion they called me to write a poem. I moved to Boston five years ago, and I was very naive when I moved here. You know, and I got into the Boston poetry scene. I realized, oh, that's poetry too. That's poetry too. I can do that. I can do that. So, I've just, you know, two individuals right here. You know, 
uh, I've been inspired by so much since I've been in Boston that that's, how, that's helped me grow and evolve as an artist mm -hmm. itself. That's awesome. Great to hear the stories of the, the origins of that. Um, you know, and, and going off of that a little bit, when did you first know that you had this, this love for poetry? When did, is there, was there a moment? Uh, was it over time that you can, it let it sink in? Or what, what did that look like for you all? I remember sitting in the cafeteria during the, orient, the week-long orientation period of undergrad, and I was attending Berk, Bowling Green State University, um, and sitting there, and I just started writing. I was really emotional. I was, it was my first introduction to, introduction to college, and I think I was releasing a lot of pain, mm -hmm. a lot of confusion from high school, and um, I was starting to really critically think and analyze what I was experiencing in, in college and meeting people from very diverse backgrounds, um, being away from home for the first time, um, getting over people that I had, I had just broken up with a girlfriend. So all these emotions were coming out and I just started writing them out. And it was interesting because I would start to play with imagery and play with the way I utilized words to express how I was feeling. I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. I, I guess I can add this and rhyme this, and mm -hmm. I can add this line, and it'll, it'll give someone the picture of me doing this, and it means this, and I think metaphors started to really come out from that, and I, and I got the courage to read something in my um, scholarship cohort, and it, I think it kind of bolstered from, from that. I started to write more. I used my writing to apply for book scholarships and um, just realized that that was a really cool platform that was different than me as a musician. And having been the musician my entire life, being on a stage with an instrument is super easy mm. for me to, to do. Whereas being on stage with my words is so much more vulnerable, I sure. feel, for yeah. myself. So that's, I think, where it started. I love the way your eyes smile when your freckled cheeks resemble the shape of the letter U. How the sound waves from your laughter pinball against my skin, causing an eruption of euphoric goosebumps. You hypnotize me with your hips. Like the walk of a queen in full stride, you are a woman. You are beautiful. You should be honored. You should be valued. But no, not values like the price tag of a slave in third world countries or just another notch on some guy's belt that you met last night at the bar and far from okay. Is it that men have deemed you just another leg? But just as upsetting as you devaluing yourself, see, women trade insults like 10-year-old boys trade baseball cards. It's so hard to see figures on TV that resemble misconceptions of truth. False advertisements brand images of self-objectification onto the tongues of little girls so when they speak to one another, they disfigure each other with everyday conversations that leave deep impressions and foster roots. So stop it. It's disgraceful and I don't like it and neither should you because you are a woman. You are gorgeous. You are intelligent. You have power in the privilege that you hold. In a group of 26 individuals, the letter U is the most important. It's ownership, empowerment, and it can push insecurity out in the open. So I ask you, what are you going to do next? Because if beauty is in the eye of the beholder, then nothing or no one can stop the beauty in you. I wrote my first poem at six. I'm pretty sure I was six years old. Um, it was a family friend. He was also a professor. And he uh, would tutor my sister. And, you know, he would talk about things I'd never heard, read stories to me, uh, use words I'd never heard. You know, I was just very fascinated with his mind, I'm sure. And um, he, he really found a way to spark my creativity. So um, I wrote my first poem. And I didn't, let me be fair, I, I took something to him that I'd written. And I showed it to him. He said, who wrote this? <laughs> and I said, I wrote this. I remember being very surprised. And he asked me again, very emphatically, who wrote this? You know, as if I made it up the first time or he didn't hear me. 
I said, I wrote this. You know, I remember at six years old having to defend myself. And um, he said, do you know what this is? And I literally didn't even understand the question because, you know, do I know what this is? He said, this is a poem. And he said, since this is a poem, you know, since this is a poem, then you are a poet. That makes you a poet. <laughs> and I remember thinking, you know, at six, I was something. Right. You know what I mean? I was, what, what I do is what I, you know. And so um, I never forgot it. I never forgot it. I can't stop that. Um, my, for me, um, w when I first wrote that Mother's Day poem for my mom, uh, and then I started writing poems, you know, we've had a death in the family, can you write something mm -hmm. for them? Um, this child was born, um, and they just got married, you know, that's how it started writing poems, and very, I was very formulaic in how I wrote them for the family and friends, but the fact that even, uh, all I had to do was take personal details and contextualize words mm -hmm. to where I could invoke an emotion out of someone just by reading mm -hmm. it. And mostly it to be a positive one. It just, it's almost a high for me to make someone feel good. And then when I got older and I became, you know, more involved and more open-minded to different aspects, you know, of social justice and the way the world works as a whole, I literally had this epiphany like the year, second year I was living here, I'd only been going to open mics for a while, and I was like, wait a minute, you know? So I went through like, you know, periods of depression and, you know, a very dark mental place for a while, but then I moved here and I had this epiphany, wait a minute, I can use my poetry not only to give myself therapy and help other people feel good at the same time and find a way to make it entertaining, all in one piece. And to me, that's just magical. And I love, you know, I've heard some people say this, and I fully agree with them. Um, I firmly believe, like a lot of others do, that it doesn't, there is no such thing as poetic language or this is poetry, this is not. You know, you can have personal taste, but there is no general standard of what is or isn't poetry. I feel that your personal standard is what poetry is because it's your self-expression and you can't dictate what is and isn't someone's mm -hmm. self-expression. Right. I mean, I think that's the great part about art, right? You know, it comes in so many different ways and yeah, it manifests. Yeah. It comes out of different people and even when you, you know, it, it's not single tracked with one person either. You can be, you know, musician, poet, art, uh, you know, paint, mm -hmm. do whatever, you know, I think that's one of the great things about art when you look and start to break down artists. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also interested to hear, you know, when you're going to write poetry, um, you know, there's a lot of different poetry about a lot of different things. Some people write more uh, for characters. Some people write about events. Some people write about kind of nebulous things that, you know, for the for the writer, it, it hits very close to home. But for a, a, a reader or someone who's hearing it, they might not be able to put it together. But um, I want to hear from you. What's your What's your muse? Where do you draw from when you're writing? Um, is it, do you you know take events and and parlay that into a poem, or is it? You know, you meet someone on the street, and that inspires it. What does that look like for you all? Or a combination of all of those things. Yeah, like, yeah, right? You know, yeah. as a songwriter myself, I know you can kind of pull from all sorts yeah. of different things. Very true, very yeah. true, very true. And, and, and that also makes it seem as if the art might exist in the same place for everyone, if such a place exists. But um, I respect the idea. You know what I mean? When the idea comes, I respect it. You know what I mean? Because... It might not come again, you know, so I, I'm constantly writing things. That, I mean, you know, look, hey. <laughs> um, and also, you know, the creative power, the creative essence, you know, it's a real thing, you know, and I kind of, I, I kind of, it, it'd, be, it'd be interesting if it were sort of more in the school systems, like this, this essence and the power of creativity, you know, because so much of it um, is who we are. You know what I mean? I mean, right. a, a basic stop sign or a stop light or, you know what I mean? Someone created that. That came from an idea, you know. But um, anyway, I respect the idea and the creative, you know, essence. So my poems come when they come, when I'm inspired. Inspiration's a big deal. Creativity, inspiration, those things are real. Don't get to talk about it much in sort of an academic, you know, uh, system. Or, or, or sometimes, it depends on the class, but 
those things should be relied upon, I think, as artists. And I know you do a bit of with the art education mm -hmm. uh, piece with that, so it's you know mm -hmm. it's obviously a passion area of yours yes. to make sure that we're yeah. perpetuating this. Oh, I think it's wonderful to be in schools teaching children poetry and, and listening to their poetry and them you know teaching me. Um, yeah, so that that's a huge part, you know, awesome. sharing with others what I might not have had at a certain time. Sure. Not, just being absolutely Definitely. open and free with it. It's necessary. Yes. You can be my poetry paper And I can write upon ya When I come up with ideas I can whisper them to you, my dear When I need some love and care Baby, you are always there. I'm breathing you just like the air. I never had a love like this. Imagine the best word with the best kiss. I imagine finger popping myself looking for a nut. I back away from the cliche or measuring wealth as self when self is worth more. Matter of fact, when the words stream from my pen, no beginning, no end, I am forced to acknowledge the comfort of an ink spot. Life linking out of my pen, laying seeds on a page. I realize I am in love. The ink smells toxic, but the idea is intoxicating. I was born a poet. I have chosen my pen over all my lovers. My pen broke my cherry. You can be my poetry paper. And I can write upon ya. When I come up with ideas, I whisper them to you, my dear. When I need some love and care, baby, you are always there. I'm breathing you just like the air. And Luci, I know you write a lot about characters in your pieces. Yes, yes I do. Um, some, some characters um, I create on my own, um, and I implement uh, social justice impl uh, aspects of their life. And I'll write sometimes two to four, maybe more parts to the character, because I'm almost like a screenwriter. You know, like each poem is an evolution of that character's mm. life, and you hear firsthand through them what they experience. And not everyone has the same story. And I like to just try and make, okay, how can I make this different from what the average person might go through, or how can I make this exactly what might someone might go through? So there's ways to develop sympathy and or empathy. Um, and I also do characters sometimes, um, I do impersonations sometimes too, so <laughs> sometimes they're funny, you know, like Stewie Griffin from Family Guy, you know, like, oh my God, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, or like, you know, Baby BK, the water boy, you know, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, those are, those are my first two, like, funny pieces, you know, but then I just, sometimes every Halloween I do a character piece that's a scary one, like, and in makeup, so two years ago I did The Crow in makeup, and kind of freaked everybody out because you know, I had the hair and everything for it, just had to shave. This past year I did Heath Ledger's The Joker. That one I had a lot of fun with because oh, I, wow. I enjoy characters themselves. Like I'm a huge movie buff. That's why I'm, that's why I'm an actor because mm -hmm. I, I love the uniqueness in a, in a character to where no one else knows that mind except that person. Because mm -hmm. we don't know, no one knows our mind like we know our mind. Mm -hmm. So if someone else tries to tell you what you think or how you think it, you say, no, this is why, because I'm me. So with a fictional character, it's even better because you can play with it and have fun with it, and you're not really harming anybody. Sure. Mm. You're just impersonating. Mm. Right. You know. 
And that the Heath Ledger one, that one gave people chills. Because I was, because what I do is I'll take like implements, uh, I'll take aspects of their dialogue from movies, and I'll organize it to a direction that the movie or TV show didn't take them. So they'll be hearing what they're used to hearing, but not the reason why. And so it's fresh, but the same at the same time. That's, really That's a little cool. bit into your coin term as yourself as a, a pactromedian. Uh, the, yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the poet, the actor, and the comedian kind of all laced into one as we uh, as Yeah, we I actually researched it. that. To, I actually researched that term to, to try and make sure no one else came up with that yet. Some people may have thought of it, but to my knowledge, no one's actually like publicly acknowledged that. So I feel comfortable because I'm those three things separately as well as with my poetry pieces combined together. Great. My name is Lucci. Not to be confused with Gucci or mistaken for Hoochie. I am a man with a duty that might eventually force someone to sue me. If anybody can prove me wrong, I beg of you to prove me. I've never been shy to admit I was wrong, just as long as we don't argue like a radio playing the same songs. My name has five letters. L-U-C-C-I. Each and every letter has a purpose I go by. Even though I wisely know I'm not the wisest, I can honestly say that I try to be wise. The first letter is L, stands for listen. Because I choose to listen to the blues of the smitten who've been written into non-existence. I also listen to indifference and the happy. I don't care if their stories are scrappy, snappy, or even sappy, or if the nature is a major wager full of danger. You is to understand. Whether you're a woman or a man, I want to understand chances of circumstances getting better or worse. Did you get the job letter? Or were you cursed with a hearse? Understand doesn't mean justify, but it can let you know why they will or won't testify. Letter number three happens to be C, stands for care. I care about anyone and everyone, anything and everything. You're a snob who's a con man looking down on a slob for a regular job. Ignorantly, fully hating doctor with every play in the way of debate. The love of my life are the first to pull a knife. Next letter, another C. Consider. I have sedational consideration for the suffering who continue to buffer just to benefit another I could care less at the expense of a slave mother. I have consolational consideration for an animal or human born to the shores of life they never asked for, taught from the core, close the door on the poor, keep asking for more and more. Letter number five is I, inquire. I inquire about the fire and ice within the tire, the wire, the dire, put on a flyer. I don't care, whatever it is, I still inquire for my knowledge to grow higher. Racially, socially, sexually, religiously, politically, historically, economically, even futuristically, I still inquire. Everybody has a story. Here's mine. Southwest Detroit till I was 14. Picked on and bullied just for being me. Awkward and shy, as well as mad and sad. Unnecessary drama at home, they feel even more alone. Experience and images of interracial harmony until I kissed a different race but couldn't do so comfortably. Forced to look over my shoulder by people I loved and hated by hatred I thought was outdated. Down south of Tennessee and Georgia. At the time, for me, compared to the D, I wondered if blacks were really free. But now I'm in the bean where I see bigotries everywhere you can possibly stare. But too many people don't seem to care. So now that I'm older and developed a mind, I realize I can't go back in time for as justice mountains to climb, not only with racism, but with sexism. All my life experience and images of women who claim nice guys finished last. That's because we couldn't get past the master of lying and conniving who wishes to cast them into a role of a hoe with the weak to weak limit of caste. Homophobia is a toxicity in simplicity that's in enormity and surpasses perplexity. I see a society full of judgment, whether it comes to superstitions of politicians with oppositions to peaceful and loving compositions, or individuals with animosity toward the generosity of those from another mother, and even some from the same mother. By the way, as I write this, infinite innocence are having infinite innocence taken away just for the taking. Every system, every country, somehow corrupt and broken. By no means am I a saint, but compared to the needy and greedy and the towers of power, I feel like a token. 
So I'm telling you, I have thoughts and wishes like a door revolving around peace and love. A solution with no institution of a revolver to evolve to this conclusion. I'm listening, understanding, caring, considering, inquiring. Not to be confused with Gucci or mistaken for Hoochie, my name is Lucci. So. And Tim, how about yourself when you're writing? So it's interesting, he talks about characters and taking the perspective of, of someone, and that's where I think my art is transitioning into. It started off solely as personal experiences. Things that I've felt, things that I've gone through, and found a creative way to share that um, through imagery. I really enjoy vivid imagery. I enjoy writing pieces that are simple enough for someone to get it if they've never listened to poetry. If they're not someone that normally goes to poetry or, or is into, into poetry, I really like to make it something that they can understand because that's how I understand. There's all different forms of poetry and literature and um, I've always struggled with writing. I've always struggled with reading and literature. So that was always something that um, I knew that I wasn't the only one that struggled with, with, those, with those types of things. So I wanted to make my work an opportunity and accessible for individuals who may not understand some of the more intricate and, and um, in, intricate literature and poetry that um, it may take you a while to sink in and, and understand. So moving from the personal um, draws of, of my work into uh, realms where I'm trying to articulate what someone else may have gone through, what a woman may go through in, in this scenario, what um, uh, someone who is um, disabled may go through in, in the scenario. And, I'm, and I try to really understand, I'm trying rather, to understand and in, in add perspective um, to that to share with other people. And it's, it's an amazing feeling when someone comes up to you and say, wow, that impacted me this way. Or thank you so much for that, I needed yes. that. Or could you send me a copy yes. of that piece because I, I feel like I need that. Or I needed that because I've gone to so many people and done the same thing, mm. to musicians, to artists, and to poets where I'm just like, thank you. Thank you so much for what you just did. Um, it is the greatest feeling to know that you're able to contribute positively it's to a true. space like it's that. True. Oh yeah. I think it's a really great way. Also, I just want to add on to that. Um, mm -hmm. That the best part about it is that when you can gleefully acknowledge, not just to yourself but to the world, you know what? The world doesn't revolve around me, and I know this. Mm. This is me <laughs> showing it to you. you know? Sure. We just have just a, a couple minutes here left, but I wanted to ask some questions uh, about uh, some individual experiences. Um, Yael, I know you um, are involved with the Lizard Lounge yes. um, Slam Poetry Team. Yes, and I'm you, on the National Slam Team. So on the West, National Slam Team, and I and and I, from what I hear, uh, you are in the finals. You're in the finals. April 19th. So, congratulations yes. on okay, that. That's, up, that's it's fantastic. It's a lot of fun. It really is a lot of fun. You so, know. how do you get, how do you get in, you know involved with that? Is it just <laughs> kind of stumbled, you know, into slamming. But um, you mean people in general, if they want yeah, to slam, yeah. if they want to get involved, just come down and slam on an open, you know, Sunday when there's a slam. Just come and bring your poems and go for it. You know what I mean? Share your poems. Sure. I keep trying to get. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. I started when I moved to Boston. I was trying to find a place, a community. I, I really was struggling with with Boston in the in the area. And I was like, you know, where can I go hear live music and where can I go find an open mic for poetry? Hmm. And Lizard Lounge, Cantab Lounge were the first two things that people told me I had to go to. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I stepped into Lizard Lounge, which is in Cambridge, um, I was like, yo, this is a dope a lot space. Yeah, a lot I love this. And then you see these individuals getting up on the stage yeah. and you're mind blown. You're like, wow, I yeah. love this. And you meet individuals. I met them both at, yeah. at Lizard Lounge. <laughs> And they look out for you. Yeah. They 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 see you again and again and again. Right. And they ask you about yourself, and mm -hmm. they they encourage you and they push you. So, because of the Lizard Lounge, because of the poetry community, 
this is able. This mm -hmm. was able to. I was able to yeah. to, to, to make this happen. So. Right. And talking about community, I know Lucci. Uh, yeah. Talking about we were speaking a little earlier about art without uh, art without ego. Yeah. Um, so if you can talk just a little bit about that. Oh yeah. Um, well, I moved. I moved to Boston five years ago, and you know everyone. I've been inspired by so much. You know, just as Tim has. You know, I'm sure Nyayo is, is just as inspiring as she is. I'm sure she's inspired oh, sometimes too. Oh, you know. Are you kidding? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but I've I want the common thing I've heard. And it's not just in Boston. I've heard this in other places too. But I've always heard from some form of locals somewhere. You know, no one supports each other. No one supports each other. Everyone's out to get me and you know everybody else. And I was literally just resting from work one day in my bed, and I was just thinking, you know, what if I made a Facebook group to where people can have the freedom to display what they want, promote events of their own. Mm. Uh, you know, help promote other artists if they know them. And I just started, all the artists I knew that I was friends with on Facebook, I just, I created the group and I was like, you know, AWE Art Without Ego because I named it that because um, one, at the end of the day, it's not about us. You know, it's about the art itself. You know, I mean, of course, you can say if you have a purpose for your art, that can be for an individual thing. But at the end of the day, Art is still art, mm -hmm. and it will always be art. Whether you contribute to it or not, other people are going to. Right. So I created the group, and there's almost there's close to 700 members. Mm -hmm. awesome. um, if I don't That's beat awesome. an artist close to them, if I don't if I don't beat them to sharing their stuff in at first because <laughs> I like it, you know they're at their own free will. They have their own free will to share as much of it as they want. Mm -hmm. Sure. For sure. That's awesome. Well, unfortunately, we are out of time for the program, but I want to thank you all so much for coming on to the program. It's great hearing about your artistry and your experiences as poets. Um, and I, you know, I hope that our, 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 our viewers you know, look you up and, and see when the, those performances are happening because you know, um, as we saw here today, it's a, it's a great take. And, and again, very much appreciate you coming on. Uh, and for all of you out there, thank you for watching the Songwriter Sessions, the Poetry Edition, uh, and we'll be back real soon. Take care. <laughs>